The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of Rising to the Occasion. A very special one here because we're going to be bringing you some UFC, and that's it. That's all. Usually we jump around to a bunch of different sports. Last episode, I think we hit, what, four different sports? We talked, uh, I guess, if you count, count college football, NFL. Uh, we talked some NBA, and then we talked a little bit of UFC. Uh, we're diving into the UFC 298. There's some really fun fight cards coming up. When you talk about UFC 298 right now, that's going to happen, uh, I guess, whenever this airs tonight. Uh, and then you've also got 299 coming up. And that one, we, we were just talking about that, me and Jeremy were, before hopping on. And that one looks really exciting when you talk about all of the, the fighters that are going on. I'm, I'm sure we'll dive into that one whenever that one gets here. But before we get too far, first, want to let everybody know, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to support us even further on YouTube, what you can do is you can click that link down below and you can actually join and, sub and subscribe to our channel by uh, joining and, and becoming a member. Uh, and so we, we would really greatly appreciate that. We've got a few few members so far. And what we're doing with the members is we're giving them exclusive access to extra content. And then also you get early access to content that uh, that you know as soon as it uploads, it's it's available to all of our members first before everybody else. So make sure to join. That helps us. And then we also want to give that back to you guys by doing amazing giveaways and things like that to our members. Um, so we thank you so much for that. Then another great way to, to support us, you can go to rising2.com slash shop. We've got a, a, a bunch of merchandise that we keep on updating in there. We've got a lot more in the works. So go to risingto.com slash shop. And that's a great way to support us here on Rising to the Occasion. But uh, let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to talk UFC 298, everything that's going on in Anaheim. 298 goes down this Saturday at the Honda Center in Anaheim, California. A very exciting event when we look at everything going on, especially just the big fights. Uh, but first, got to bring in my two co-hosts. We got the man just across from Sioux and Sioux City, uh, across town from me. We got Jeremy. Jeremy, how are we doing tonight? Doing pretty good. Then I'm just really looking forward to another night at UFC. Obviously, we we like you said we talk a little bit about UFC, but once we get good upcoming fights like for what we're going to see in 298, we're definitely going to be up and talking about it. I'm just really looking forward to the Volkanovski Turkey fight. Then that one's obviously as the main car is definitely going to be a good fight. Then it just seems like from the last couple of fights that we've had in the UFC, they've been really good cards and. I'm not going to try and say anything, but I think this might be the best one yet so far for leading up to it. But Josh, yeah, I, mean, I mean, personally, I think in the last few, I think the Colby Covington fight, that one was a, the Colby Covington, uh, Leon Edwards fight. Uh, that was a pretty good one. And then we just now had the the one with uh, uh, Dracus Duplessis, uh, you know, and Sean Strickland. So that was a, a great one. Um, but the man from Mobile, Alabama, Blake, how you doing, brother? What is up, boys? Glad to be back. Ready for UFC, uh, ready for Ian Gary to try to show something. I think he's got to, I think he's got to put something to get together and and have some highlights in this one. Uh, you you got to knock somebody out, brother. I, I feel like you got to you got to put on a show. Uh, and obviously, anytime Volk fights, I'm there to watch it. I mean, he's just uh, he he's he's one of those guys that I'm always going to pay to watch, no matter the price, uh, no matter what day it's on. I'm I'm going to pay to watch Volk a fight i mean he's a superstar yeah yeah volkanovsky i mean he's the longest reigning current champion in ufc right now so i mean that's it's that's i think what draws everybody into this uh and then of course you've got a taporia who uh is has been looking good ever since yeah. his first debut i mean he's he's looking really good so we're gonna jump into that that event last um but first before we get into that event first bringing up some of the uh prelims early prelims going through all the fights uh, is, is there any matchups that you guys look outside of this one that would be your favorites? I, I mean, Blake, you and I, we, we just brought up the, the Jeff Neal, Ian Gary. Uh, I think that was one. Whenever you look at Ian Gary, I think he has a lot of expectations coming into the, into the UFC. And he started off hot, and he, he, he brought all the attention. And then the big fight that he had against uh, Neil Magny here in his last fight, he didn't really perform as well as he should have. You know, he mm -hmm. obviously won the fight. But you've got to be able to drop him, and that's one thing with with Neil Magny. We just saw that in this last uh, this last big fight night uh, that that uh, Neil Magny was able to uh, slip around. Uh, who was he going against? He was going against the Canadian Mike Malott, uh, and, and so he was able to slip that one in the last few seconds, last thirty seconds. All of a sudden, turn that around. So he's he's a tough guy, but still, Ian Gary with all of the hype around him, I think that's one fight 
uh, that, that I, I would assume all, all three of us are pretty excited for looking at uh, it, if Ian Gary can live up to the hype. I think he's got to try to stop being uh, – try to stop acting like Conor McGregor. Like you're not Conor McGregor. We don't care. Like We, we just want you to be Ian Gary. We want you to go in and get a finish. Uh, all the showboating and – uh, trying to you know flip off the camera and all that like I, yeah. I don't care about any of that I want you to get in there and fight and you've been underwhelming the last couple times I've watched you and I think you need to bring it if you want to sell tickets and, and put people in the seats I think you need to bring it on this one I'm interested in uh, Henry uh, Cejudo uh, I, I think uh, that will be an interesting fight I know he is the underdog uh, in the live Vegas odds. So I'm, I'm interested in that one. I want to see if he can pull that off. Uh, I think that'll be a pretty, pretty solid fight. I took him money line. Yeah. Uh, I think the value's there. If, if you're betting on UFC, I, I just, I like that value. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Bantamweight fight uh, there. I mean, I think that one's a lot of fun, especially whenever you look at Mirab. Uh, I'm, I'm right there with you. That's one of those underdog uh, matchups that, I mean, the underdog to me feels like the favorite. Honestly, whenever we look even at the main event, the the underdog is kind of like it seems like the fan favorite right now. Even though mm. Volkanovski obviously has his fan base, and a lot of people are going to be supporting him and love seeing the dynasty that he's been able to put together. Uh, and and but uh, you know with Tapuria, I mean, he's he's a, a dude that came in hot on the scene, and and everybody's been following him. And so uh, same thing over there uh, with with Sahudo, though. I think that's going to be a really fun one looking at the mm -hmm. the underdog who can win. Um, but Jeremy, over to you, man. Any any fights that kind of stand out to you? I mean, outside obviously the main card, I'm I'm kind of interested in the Anthony Hernandez the Roman versus Roman Kabilov. That one, I think that one's going to be a pretty good fight. I mean, you look at both Anthony and Roman's record; they're both up there between eleven and two and twelve and two. They're both good technical fighters, and they're both able to bring their a game into the octagon and they obviously know how to conserve energy and conserve gas in the tank just so they can get that full round in but i mean both of them are really good fighters and they're not afraid to throw some haymakers and they just want to absolutely obliterate their opponent but i mean it's definitely going to be a good one i kind of have my favorites towards um anthony hernandez a little bit but Looking you at got, these, you got to root, root for the American, man. You got to root for the American. I know, but I mean, any anything's obviously possible. You can never yep. know in these types of situations. It's, but overall, this is going to be a really good card, no matter what kind of fight you're looking at. Yeah, you're right, and I feel like middleweight is about the highest I'll go before it's just it just it's just not fun unless John Jones is fighting. Uh, you yeah, know, it's just I I love it. Like you, like you brought up, uh, like, like you brought up Blake. You know, watching Volkanovski and and seeing him fight any of the featherweight fights, lightweight mm -hmm. fights, uh, which you know Volkanovski even had a lightweight fight in his last fight uh, didn't turn out well for him. But uh, you know, all all of those, it just seems like those smaller guys have so many more moves in their arsenal. They, they, they are not just going to stand there and throw haymakers the whole time, the way that your heavyweights do and stuff like that. And so middleweight is right there at the verge where you're getting big enough where, where you're, you're going to, you're going to throw some haymakers, but you still see some grappling and, and some good groundwork uh, and just overall fighting. But yeah, I mean that Anthony Hernandez fight, the one that really stood out to me with that too, with that uh, Hernandez uh, fight, it, it just uh, looking at him and copy love, uh, is that is how dead even they are across the board. You mentioned their record. Uh, their reach is the exact same at 75 inches, and then their leg reach, uh, uh, Kapilov only has a, a one-inch reach on yeah. it. So it's, it's 40 to 41 on leg reach. It's really uh, Outside of that, I mean, their, their height is the exact same. Uh, these these two guys are both coming off of a win, too. So that's definitely a fight that I think uh, that's, that's another good one to throw out there. But I'm, I'm there with you, though. I think uh, regardless of, of you know looking at their past fights, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna be with you and vote, vote for the American. I'm gonna uh, root for Anthony Hernandez to win that one too. I just feel like overall he just seems like the more well-rounded uh, fighter. Yeah. Uh, a, a fun middleweight fight though to bring up. Uh, I, I think another one that kind of adds a little bit to it uh, today. Whenever they were doing, uh, let's see, was it today? I'm trying to think of when this was. I think it was today. Whenever they were doing the weigh-ins, some news came out about the Justin Taffa against uh, Marco Rod Rodrigo or uh, sorry, R Rogero uh, de Lima. Uh, that that can't, the fight was going to be canceled because Tafa had gotten hurt. Justin Tafa, so he he was going to he was mentioned that he had gotten hurt. They were going to cancel it today. Uh, it was either today or yesterday. And now <coughs> Tafa's uh, Justin Tafa's brother, Junior Tafa, 
comes in to save the fight and he's going to replace Justin. So I thought that was a really cool thing that it's not just a, a random fighter out there that's going to step in his place. Uh, to me, I, th I think that's really cool. That's your brother saving the fight saying, no, you know what? The fans were, want were wanting this fight. They were excited to watch this fight. I'm stepping in. And so to see your brother step in for you, I think that's, that's a pretty cool thing to do, um, you know, just to come in here and save the fight. Uh, so that's, that's one that I think adds, adds some excitement just because you've got a guy that he wasn't really prepared for this fight, but he's going to step in anyways, see where it can go. Uh, and so I, I feel like that kind of brings a little bit of, of a, uh, a fan, a fan base to the underdog there, just because hey, we've got to root for the guy that didn't even train for this, the guy that saved the fight, the guy that without him we wouldn't have seen this fight. So that was one that I thought was going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a true dog. That's yeah, a true yeah. dog. For real. No like, joke. That's a warrior, bro. Yeah. 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 And that's that's something too that I feel like when when you watch UFC, you don't you don't get that. You know, you don't you don't you don't. Or if you, sorry, if you don't watch UFC, you don't get that. You don't understand yeah. what all this is because you, you got to think about this. They, these guys train for a couple of months to go out there and have, you know, anywhere between 30 seconds and yep. uh, what you've got maybe, let's see, you, you normally have three, three, three rounds of three minutes, right? Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, you're looking for nine minutes of fame. You're, 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 you're sitting here and preparing for months for nine minutes. That's that's crazy. Or if you're if you're going to a, a big time uh, bout, if you're on that main card, if you're going for a title for 15 minutes of fame, you know, and, and you're hoping that you can end it before well, the 15 minutes. Some of these they, some of these guys do, only last 30 seconds. They do uh, three rounds, five minutes, don't they? And then for title fights, it's five rounds. Five yeah, 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 for, yeah, yeah, yeah. So five 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 rounds of yeah. So for a title fight, 25 minutes. Yeah, um, yeah. So, but you know, it's just it's just crazy to think that these guys are are battling day in and day out. And, and just, if, if you sat, sit there and watch their sparring, they're not taking it easy. Yeah. They're no. pushing themselves hard. Uh, and so, I mean, you know it's, how many it's times trainers have probably gotten kicked or punched? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> well, John Jones, uh, he tore his, uh, he tore his shoulder up in a, in a sparring incident. I mean, yeah. they went to grappling and everything and they hit the mat and bang, it was over just like that. Like can't mm. fight for a year, you know? So, mm. I mean, it's like for you to step in, uh, the the day before a fight, two days before a fight, ten days before a fight, bro, it's insane. Like that's a warrior, you know. And and a lot of people, a lot of people think that that you know. I just see on the internet people say that oh this guy soft, this guy soft. Man, these dudes are dogs. And th to keep a fight on the card, your brother steps in. Uh, that's a warrior to me, man, and and I'm glad because this card's going to be a banger, and you know he's probably going to lose because you're at an unfair advantage. I mean, you haven't watched any film, you haven't done any training, uh, you you just you haven't. I mean, you might have been around the camp and everything, but it's just not the same, you know. Yeah, it's definitely not the same for preparing for the fight. Yeah, and being around the preparation for the fight totally different. And another another thing that people don't realize too is the weight cuts. You know, you're, you're talking about a guy at 145 who is uh, jacked, and you look at me. I, I weigh 170, 175. I'm, I'm I'm tall. I'm six foot three, but I'm, I'm skinny. I mean, you look at me. I'm not near as jacked as, as these guys. I mean, it's it's crazy to think that I weigh more than this dude though that's over here packing so much more you know so much more muscle, muscle than i am mm -hmm. uh, and then so you know i don't think people give them enough credit for the weight cuts that they have to do yep. to trim down so much body fat in order to, to make these weights uh that's it's tough it's it's not easy uh, I, I've, I've done some weight cuts with back whenever i wrestled but nothing to the extent of what these guys are doing because yeah. my weight cuts were cutting it to basically what my weight should be and, and keeping myself at the weight that i should be these guys are cutting it to weights that, man, like you're you're putting your body through some rigorous training, uh, and then you know I, I was I was teasing I was teasing with uh, Jeremy, I, you know because we you know people people look at the leg kicks the little leg kicks that you're doing back and forth, and you think oh that's that's cute but that's not doing anything. No, you've never had a leg kick. You've never had somebody check your leg kick if you yeah. think that that's just nothing. But, and so I, I was teasing with Jeremy. I said, hey, you want you want to feel what that feels like? Go ahead and kick kick my leg as hard as you can. And, and what you're doing is you're just putting your shin up there and, and pushing it back into it, creating more force, make sure, making sure it hurts them. It's not that it's not going to hurt you. When you check a leg kick, it doesn't not hurt you. It's going to make sure that they feel it. 
Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's just stuff like that, that if you, if you've never been in combat sports at all, you don't understand that the, the stuff that they're going through yeah. and the pain that they're feeling out there, um, they, they shake it off pretty quick, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, but you guys ready to roll over to the main event? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, man. All right. Before we do get to the main event, of course, we've got to mention our sponsors and an amazing sponsor of ours, which is factor because we want to everybody to know that with factors, delicious, ready to eat meals, making eating uh, better every day, easy, wherever tomorrow takes you, you can be ready with prepared chef crafted and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 different options each week to choose from, including keto calorie, smart, vegan, and veggie, and so much more. And there's even 55 plus nutrition packed add-ons to help you make your, your, uh, weekly meal prepping, prepping even more delicious. Uh, so, you know, what, what we ask for our listeners is what are you waiting for? Because you've heard enough as it is, as I've gone through this ad read. So you should go over and get started today and have a feel good work of meal meals, uh, ready to go. What's so amazing about factor is that they're just ready in two minutes. So not only do you have to just put in your order, you, you tell them what meals you want, they deliver them straight to your door and you can schedule them whenever you want. So if times get hectic, you schedule it out however you need to. Maybe maybe you didn't you didn't eat all the meals from last week and you need to put a pause on it. You can pause for a week and pick it back up. They've got amazing smoothies, but they're also ready in just two minutes. So there's no more piecing together a meal and prepping it up and cooking it. And now you've got to clean up all the mess. No, you just pop it in the microwave for two minutes. Or if you want to be a little healthier, a little better option, I think it tastes better when you do it this way. You take off the film off the top, pop it in the oven for seven minutes, bam, ready to go. It doesn't get any easier than Factor Meals. We absolutely love Factor Meals uh, ever since that we've started with them. It's, it's something that I don't, I don't want to turn back from because I love Factor Meals so much. Not only that, but we've also done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So they taste amazing. They're not just a packaged up meal with processed foods. They're chef prepared meals, ready to go, ready to eat for you. And it's so much cheaper than eating out. I work on the road all the time. I absolutely hate eating out all the time because I feel like crap whenever I do it. Uh, and Factor has made that so much better. So you guys can head over to factormeals.com slash rising250 and use our code rising250 to get 50% off your first box and get two free wellness shots per box while that subscription is active. That's right. You heard that right. You can use that code R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-5-0 at factormeals.com slash R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-5-0 and get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots, not just once, but you get those two, two free wellness shots every box as long as you keep that subscription active. If you pause the subscription, it doesn't change the fact that you still get those because it's still active. So as long as you keep it active and you don't cancel, you get two free wellness shots. That is an amazing deal, guys. So you, you get 50% off and those two free wellness shots when you go to factormeals.com slash rising250 and use that code rising250. But let's go ahead and get to the main event. Uh, an amazing event when you, when you talk about it. Uh, I mean, o overall, Al Alexander Volkanovsky, he's 26 and three. Uh, he has been an absolute monster since <laughs> pretty much ever since he's been in in the the arena and in the octagon uh so i mean he's he's a lot of fun and like you said like he's he's a guy that you want to watch he's he's entertaining and he showed that during the press conference yep. um and then you've got yeah Ilya taporia uh, who uh, again very entertaining himself he's 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 cocky because he knows he's the best uh and he's he's strong he's tough He's, he's won 14 straight fights uh, and, and hasn't lost a single one in MMA. So, I mean, that's that's a tough dude. Uh, he came on the scene hot. He's growing in popularity a lot in the sport. Uh, and then if you look over at Volk, I think Volkanovski, with him losing that last fight, he went up to the lightweight title uh, and, and tried to try to fight uh, Islam, uh, what's his name, Mak Mak Makchevev? Makchevev. Uh, yeah, so, you know, so he, he went over there to try to fight him, uh, got knocked out in the first round. That doesn't take away from what he's he's done, and he went up a weight class to go fight there, fight the best one in that weight class. So he couldn't get it done there, but comes back to the featherweight, uh, the featherweight uh, weight class to defend his title there uh, against a very good fighter. So he's going to bring on one of the best, uh, the best uh, uh, contenders that he's had to see in a long time in uh, Taporia. Uh, so I mean, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know if you guys saw that press conference where uh, Volkanovski he came out. Oh man. And then, uh, you know, Taporia is over there like telling him, come on, stand up, you old man. And so he, he uh, oh, oh, kind of 
standing up my like back. oh my back, my neck and my back. <laughs> trying, trying to get trying to get out of a seat i just love it uh, I, I love it and uh I, I saw michael bisping kind of make the comparison is is this fight does it kind of have a feel like the mcgregor jose aldo fight because you've got this guy who is a young hot shot coming in he, he wants to take that that fight that title away from you and this other guy across the, the aisle he's an older more of a veteran and he knows what he's capable of uh and so he's not scared one bit he's not he's not blinking an eye he's not going to back away from this fight he's going to take you on head first and you know not saying that it's going to end the same way but uh leading up to it I, I feel like it does feel quite a bit like that that mcgregor jose aldo uh, yeah i i think it, i think it could feel like that i think it might feel like that i still think volk is at the top of his game though uh, yeah. I, I i haven't lost any confidence in volk um i i think he's i think he's still one of the best fighters did y'all just hear my nephew just scream? <laughs> yeah. my goodness uh sorry man i got the kids the, the, and... the joys of doing virtual uh, virtual podcasting yeah. from your home That's yeah nice. man and, and uh he he called me i know this is off beat for a minute but he called me today he called my wife and and asked if he could come spend the night with us tonight so uh <laughs> he's out in the living room just having a blast right now i can just uh, need those sound effects now yeah <laughs> yeah but uh yeah volk I, I still feel like he's at the top of his game he's still uh he's still very sharp still got power the last couple times that he's been taken down to the ground i feel like he's defended it very well um and and i still feel like he's got that he still got that. Uh, I'm not old yet, you know. Like, like I, I'm, st- I'm still the champ, and I still got that wow factor to put on a show for the UFC and Dana White. So, look, don't get me wrong; he could get knocked out. All right, that's what kind of power this cat's got. I mean, yeah, he, it's it's there. He could get knocked out, uh, yeah, but he, I still like Volt. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he 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 is an old guy. And, you know he's he's getting older. Uh, he's been in the, in the UFC for a while now. Uh, fought you know, anytime you fought over twenty fights, that's that's a heck of a, have a heck of a career. Um, but he doesn't fight like an old man. He he doesn't move around like an old man. He's still very dangerous. Uh, and and yeah, I mean he's, he's he's a lot of fun. Jeremy, how about you? How do you how you feeling about this, this main card event? It's definitely gonna be a fun one. I mean, all I'm saying is I just hope he gets his momentum and stamina better than trying to hold his back up in that press conference. But no, I mean, looking at this overall situation, the fight to to is in for a real, real fight. Like if you, if you think that you can take one day off against this guy, you're definitely going to be wrong. And Bolonovsky, he's proven how long has he had the belt for now? I, mean, uh, I don't I don't recall how long it's been, but it's it's been a while. He's the, it, the longest longest reigning champ. Yeah, I mean there's a reason why he's like this and literally any person like that that can have that that momentum, stamina, ability to to act to fight like a twenty one year old and you're almost he's thirty five, correct? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, and to answer your question too, Volkanovski has has a four year reign at the 145 pound. Man. So four years that he's had it. I mean, and you think of that four year span, we saw the uh, the middleweight. Let's see, we we saw it go to Israel Adesanya, from Israel Adesanya to Strickland, uh, and then f- to from Strickland to Duplessis. So you've seen it change four times. Four I know. Times. I think in that four year span, I don't yeah. remember who Israel got it from. Uh, what about Perea? Uh, the, the one of those were, that was a championship fight, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I believe it was. Yeah. yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. So did he, did he take it from Pereira then? I think yeah. he might have. Okay. Did. Yeah. That, that sounds about right. I think about right. so. I, I think so. That I sounds about right. right. But you know, regardless though, the, the fact that that's changed at least three or four times in the same four year span that Volkanovsky has been a champion. That's, that's, that's crazy. That's mind-boggling. I mean, no wonder he has back pain just because he has to help hold that belt all around all those these years. But, I mean, it's definitely going to be a fun fight. Anaheim's definitely going to be in for a treat, and all of us can say we're definitely going to be in for a real good treat. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. If we go back to the last two big-time events that happened, fight nights that happened, uh, you, you go back to 297 with Leon Edwards and Kobe Covington. Uh, that one was extremely disappointing. I felt like Kobe Covington, if you're the defender – I don't put a bad and 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 a boring fight on you. 
you want the fight to be as boring as possible or you want to knock the other guy out. Mm -hmm. um, but as the, the contender, the guy that's trying to steal the belt, I expect you to come in there and push the champ up against the wall and beat the living crap out of him for five rounds if that's what it takes. Mm -hmm. I expect you to show that you are the aggressor. Otherwise, you don't deserve the belt. And Colby Covington came into that thinking, if I keep this at a draw, I win the belt. That's not how this works, dude. That's not how it works at all. You uh, wish so that, that, was, that was a disappointment. It went five rounds of just the most boring fight I've ever seen. Uh, one of them. If, if, if it's not the most boring, it's one of them. Yeah. Um, and then you had Dracus Duplessis and Sean Strickland go five rounds. Not boring whatsoever. That was Dracus Duplessis throwing haymakers the whole fight and trying to do something to Sean Strickland. He just couldn't complete it. He couldn't do it. Uh, and we talked about that one. I feel like Sean Strickland still should have won that fight. I felt like it was a draw, which leans towards the, towards the champ. But it, it is what it is. And, and I'm super happy for Drinkus. I, I, lo I love seeing him as a champ. I love seeing where he came from and what how, how hard he's worked to get there. But last two big-time fights that we've seen for a title go the distance. Do you guys think that this is one that's going to go the distance, or do you find one of these guys is going to put the other guy on the ground? I don't think it goes the distance. I think somebody's getting knocked out. I say third round knockout. Third round knockout. I like that. I like the third round. Yeah, I mean, I feel like third round, you've you've had two rounds to feel each other out uh, and then go in there in the third round and, and take them down. Uh, that, yeah. that could definitely be a good one. I, I, I like that. I think maybe I'll, I'll take over two and a half on the, on the total. Yeah, I'd but, take over. Uh, I'm, I'm not taking a full, full five rounds. I'm right there with you guys. I think somebody's going to end this one because you look at these two fighters and how powerful they are. Uh, and, and what they're capable of, they're 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 both good, uh, it, it rounded fighters, and so I, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Let's go around the horn, though, uh, Blake. I know you kind of already said it, but who's who's your pick to win this fight between Volkanovski uh, and Taporia? Volk, baby, I ain't, I ain't jumping off the train just yet. I still believe in my guy. I hope Volk wins. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Uh, and then you you think that one's going to be by a knockout? Yeah, I, th I think. Look, either. I, it can go either way, but somebody's getting knocked out. But I like Volk uh, to knock him out. Yeah, I like it. Jeremy, how about you? Hang on a minute. Let me get my old man glasses here. Uh, yeah, we're definitely sticking with the Volkster. That, that's to say the least. It's going to be a th third round knockout, I say, within I say within three and a half minutes of the, of the third round knockout. Okay, so maybe about like 145-ish left on the clock. Yeah, right before Clean, Cleans his clock. Yep. All right, I like it. Two picks for Volkanovski. I'm right there with you guys. I, I like Tapuria. I like the energy that he brings, uh, and I think he's a big-time fighter. I'm really happy that he has this opportunity. I think he deserves it 100%. Uh, and, and like you said, Blake, I think it could go either way. I'm going to stick there with you, Jeremy. I think maybe third round, uh, and I'm, I'm just going to say TKO. Uh, I don't know if it's completely just knockout cold, but TKO at the very least. Uh, and, and I do think it's going to be I think it's going to be first round. Tapuria looks like he's winning. Uh, and I think he's going to come out very strong. I think he's going to try to attack. And it's going to be Volkanovski just backing up and feeling him out the entire first round. Second round, you're going to see a back and forth. And the third round is when I'm making count sheep in his sleep while he's knocked out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, if you, if you call that a uh, go, go for it. But uh, okay. no, I, I do. I think, I think in the third round is when you finally see Volkanovski come out strong. If it, if it does go past the third round, maybe the end of the fourth round, he finally pulls something out where he's yeah. able to, you know, get him down and, and, and pull off the TKO win. Um, yeah. But I do think this isn't. I, I don't think this is going to go the distance. I don't think it's going to be a decision that we're all going to be be cringing at in the next morning. Uh, so that's that's one thing I'm really excited for this fight. UFC 298. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited for it. I know all three of us are. Uh, we thank all of you guys so much for watching, for tuning in. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And again, you can go down in the link below and you can join the channel and become a member today and help support this channel even further. We appreciate all donations and we want to give that back to you guys with giveaways and exclusive content, all kinds of fun stuff. It helps us grow even further if you can do that. So do that. And then you can also head over to our website, rising2.com slash shop for all of our merchandise. That's the best way to find the best merchandise uh, out of any sports, uh, sports show out there on the market. So go check it out. Uh, you can go there. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, you can give us a five-star review. That is the best way to help us out over on those platforms. We thank you all so much for all of the love, all of the sport. Until next time.